Hey, what's up? John Sonmez here from simpleprogrammer.com. I got a couple of book reviews for you. And I mean, there's you're only gonna get one right now, but I, I've got some that I'm gonna be re-recording. Uh, the first one is a review on what is actually a great courses. I consider this a book because it's on Audible. And it was a lecture, a series of lectures by a professor on uh, Frederick Nietzsche. Okay, Nietzsche. I, I, hate pronouncing his name because I never can. I should just learn how to pronounce it. I should just like sit down for like half an hour and say niche, niche, <laughs> or whatever, or get some someone who's German to tell me how to pronounce it. You know, send me an send me an audio clip of, of you saying saying it over and over again, so I can listen to it. All right. Anyway, the, the book or the course is called The Will to Power: The Philosophy of Frederick Nietzsche. Frederick Nietzsche. <laughs> And it is uh, it's one of the great courses. It's one of the cool things on Audible, by the way. If you haven't signed up, you should definitely sign. When you study someone like, l let's say, let's say Frederick Nietzsche, right, in, in this example, if you don't understand sort of the context and the environment and historically where he was, it's hard to understand his writing. Because even though so much of his writing is, is transcendental is without time is, is timeless I'd say or surpasses time right some of it isn't <laughs> and some of it is very context driven and you have to understand a little bit of the background and his background in order to make a little bit more sense of it so I don't think that's necessarily particularly the case for, for Nietzsche but it's good to get that kind of opinion and I want to make sure that I'm not missing something right because you could totally misinterpret something if you don't have the right historical context, right? So a, a be, the best example of this would be things like ancient scriptures where, and you know, you know, if you took the Bible for instance, right? And if you just read some of the Old Testament of the Bible and you don't understand what's going on from a historical perspective, it doesn't, there's gonna be a lot of confusion. Right? I mean, there still may be a lot of confusion, but you see what I'm saying? Like understanding the historical perspective of things sometimes is, is really important. And so for things like philosophers, for for people that lived a long time ago, that if I can get an expert opinion on that, I like to get that background. Now, there's a danger in this, and I know you guys are like, isn't this a review on the thing? This is how I do reviews, guys, all right? As, as I, I talk about the, the meta, and then I talk about, and then I give you, do I like this thing or not, all right? So there's a danger in taking on that person's or that professor's viewpoint as fact. So for example, in this particular instance, in this great course, I think it was a good course, by the way, I think it's really informative and very opinionated on, on niche, but very accurate for the most part. But there were some points that I differed with the professor because I believe that his, he, he did not quite understand stoicism to the correct degree and so it painted things in a little bit of a different light than what I think Nishi, Nishi intended, which is fine though because it was very clear from the way that he spoke about stoicism and stoic thought that, that there was this, this break there, right? That's just one example there. Again, not that I'm an expert on Nishi, right? And on Friedrich Nishi, he is, but because his worldview and his general philosophy towards this philosopher is is different. You have to sort of separate that out, right? There, because there's there's the things that he's interpreted from his own worldview viewpoint, right? Which is is quite different than mine. And there's the things that he's pulled out of the context and the situation in which Nietzsche wrote the book and that are are less less subjective, more objective. Okay. So I know that's, that, that's <laughs> we're getting really meta here, but I think this is important, right? I mean, it's important to understand and to really think about this kind of stuff. And you know, I, I feel like I'm, I'm getting defensive against myself, <laughs> which is kind of funny, but, but in defense of myself to myself, here's the thing, it's like, yeah, I could just talk about the, how good the course was and what it covered, but the thing is like, it's really, really important that we use our critical thinking skills. I think I did a video on critical thinking and how to develop critical thinking, but you know, you just can't take what someone says for granted. And you gotta, you gotta, like, if you're gonna research something, I mean, if I, and this one consideration I said is, I'm gonna listen to what some PhD lecturer says, college professor, about a person or a thing, 
I better be prepared going in there, right? I better have a little bit of an idea of, okay, what do I think ahead of time? And how am I accepting this? And, and to say, to be cognizant enough to say, I'm not just accepting this as gospel. I'm not gonna just parrot what this person says about Nietzsche and then I'm, I'm ill-informed. I'm going to read Nietzsche's work first for myself so I can have an opinion without understanding the context and then I'm gonna listen to what this person says and get the context applied and then I'm still not going to hundred percent just accept what they say right you see what I'm saying you've you've got to think about it you've got to prepare yourself so you don't get indoctrinated people right because otherwise if you if you just read something and you just believe credible sources <laughs> because they're credible authorities on a subject you're going to get indoctrinated and you're just going to be parroting whatever this person says. It doesn't necessarily make it true. So as much as you can evaluate for yourself. So as much as possible, I like to examine and evaluate things for myself, but where I can get the assistance of someone who has the kind of skills or background that would be difficult for me to acquire. So another example of this would be if I were studying a text that was written in another language, which in this, in this case it was, but let's say, you know, a Greek text or something like that where there was different meanings of the words having someone who understands the Greek language give sort of a commentary would be very very useful because it would take me a long time it'd be very difficult for me to acquire those skills to per to properly comprehend the same thing you know I've got a book the uh, Tao Te Ching, and I'm, I'm working my way through it it's one of those books that you don't just like read it's like you, you read it multiple times but there's, there's a, a, pre a preface to it where the translator talks about the book and some of the meaning and there's some commentary on, on some of these things. And while I might not agree with it 100%, I mean, there's so many translations of this thing, right? And, and the thing is like, they have that knowledge. If they can speak Chinese, if they can read ancient Chinese, if they understand that, a, there's a lot of little subtleties that you would miss. And you, I mean, you could just read the straight forward in an English translation and you're gonna miss that kind of stuff, right? So there, there's value in, in that is, is all I'm saying. So this is not really a book review, I, I suppose, but I would say that this is a course worth checking out. If you have a very negative opinion of Frederick Nietzsche, uh, you don't understand him. And, and this is a course that can help you to understand him a little bit better, right? I'm not saying that you have to like the guy, but I am saying that he is brilliant, okay? And he's misinterpreted a lot, right? And I just reading uh, Thus Spoke Zarathustra, I could see that for myself, but listening to this lecture from this uh, professor who made a, quite a bit, of, or actually professor and his wife who made quite a bit of their life studying Nietzsche, uh, it, it's very clear that he's a very misinterpreted historical character. So all that is to say that I, I'm gonna study this guy more, okay? And I think that this is a pretty good overview. If you just kinda of wanna get an idea of who is Nietzsche and what it, what is it about, I would definitely check out the course. All right, that's all I got for you today. If you haven't subscribed already, click that subscribe button and use your brain, critical thinking, right? Even when you watch my own videos, uh, watch my videos, like don't just accept what I say. All right, that's all I got for you. Hit that subscribe button. Talk to you next time.